If you don't mind grabbing one last cup of coffee before we get started and making your way over to the seats while I give you guys a few announcements. So thank you all for coming out. Before we get started, I, I have to give a huge thanks to all of our sponsors. Uh, I, I, I want to thank the Little Rock Chamber of Commerce for providing this awesome space and uh, providing the manpower um, to get this thing done and really promoting it throughout their channels. Also, the Arkansas Venture Center, um, which is recently launched and um, soon to be headquartered on this side of the chamber building with co-working space and access to mentors and programs. Um, also, the Kauffman Foundation for allowing us to use this awesome brand um, and be connected with the 35 other cities that are doing one million cups across the nation, um, which puts us in a network of other passion entrepreneurs that are, uh, that are caring about growing each other's businesses and helping each other out. Also, I'd like to thank um, Design Matters for capturing all of this and, and giving us some awesome content to share. Um, it's a huge help for our presenters for capturing their stories and then allowing them to share it through digital media to a, a wide audience. Also, WebJive for supporting that effort as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, West Rock Coffee, because we're here to share coffee with each other. And West Rock um, is an is a awesome example of an on, a local entrepreneur um, really making an impact on our economy and then also um, the economy of Rwanda, which is pretty cool. Um, so, for those of you who haven't been here before, um, One Million Cups is an educational program where entrepreneurs come up here and share their stories. And by doing so, we all learn, uh, learn from each other, we break down barriers, um, and we grow our circle. One, one thing that the founder of One Million Cups uh, repeats over and over again is that if we can share one million more cups of coffee with each other, we can fundamentally change the way our entrepreneurial ecosystem is structured. Also, a recent report uh, that I found extremely interesting by the Kauffman Foundation, uh, they did a study over the past two years, and they surveyed um, new entrepreneurs, people who weren't entrepreneurs, and um, long-standing entrepreneurs, and what they found was that people who come in contact or who are friends with um, entrepreneurs are 30% more likely to become an entrepreneur themselves. Um, when you think about that in, in terms of an economic impact and uh, being able to create opportunities for, for people, that's huge. And so by, by us gathering here today, you may not have an idea that you're willing to jump out and start a business on today, but you're meeting people and you're, you're learning from people that you could potentially run into down, down the road and start something amazing. So um, now I'd like to welcome up our first presenter, uh, Jamie Wayne of Luxury Lav. He's going to tell us his story and his journey that led him to doing what he does now. Thank you. Uh, Jamie Wayne, I'm with Luxury Lav. Uh, we have restroom trailers. Um, these are temporary restrooms for um, any outdoor event, wedding, festival, um, you name it. Um, remodel jobs or construction projects for uh, maybe not the workers, but more so the um, employees and or customers of said business that's having uh, remodel. Um, it's interesting how we got to um, to this business as far as uh, my wife and I um, we go to events all the time um, she is um, uh, she just refuses to use the uh, the alternative the porta potties that are available and um, we decided to get into the business to try and bring something uh, a little nicer uh, clean sanitary um, restrooms to um, to these events and um, we're, we're excited about it um, we've uh, just getting started this is our uh, second month in business and just trying to spread the word to uh, other business owners other event planners wedding planners um, people involved with festivals and um, again just trying to get the word out um, it, it's interesting um, my background I, I 
10 years ago or so, I was involved with selling uh, these units on a national level and um, had stepped away for a couple of years, uh, got married. My wife has heard numerous stories about my restroom trailer adventures. Um, and over the years, you know, after hearing ma many of these stories, she has said, you know, why don't we get involved with, um, with these units and see if we can help change um, the acceptable, you know, trend of what people are used to. And, and that's kind of what our goal is, is to get, get, um, get everybody's mind changing in that direction. We're in a we're in a new uh, in a new era, and we demand higher end things, nicer things, but yet we still settle for the blue boxes that are available to us. And we would just like to bring our um, concept to uh, to Central Arkansas and Arkansas for a um, you know for a nicer restroom pleasure for everybody so that's uh that's pretty much where we are at and um glad we teamed up with the uh million cups and the chamber to get in front of some people to um get the word out and it's, i guess that's pretty much our my spill on what uh what we have and um be glad to answer any questions if anybody has any so. yeah, absolutely. All right, here. Go ahead and st go ahead and stay up here because we're gonna uh, jump back and forth on some questions. And if you jump over here on this sure, mic, sure. I'm gonna hand this mic off to other folks. Sure, sure. Um, real quick before we get started with more questions, though, uh, keep uh, capture this stuff on social media. I know Nicholas is doing so right now, um, but it'll really help us all uh, build each other's brands out and also um, help the presenters. So, does anybody have any questions for Jamie right off the bat? Um, how I got started or anything. Sydney? Yeah. Who, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Sydney Brazel and I'm the CEO and founder of the whole thing I'm presenting next. But how did you, um, I know you talked about how as humans we kind of demanded a higher level of luxury now. Like how did you choose porta potties out of like all the things you could have chose? Well, just from my past experience in selling and marketing, these same units um, for a group, um, Wells Cargo, which uh, manufactures trailers and cargo trailers. Um, we had, you know, it was very successful for us um, selling these units in larger markets than, uh, than in Little Rock. And um, we tried to sell units here in Little Rock and Arkansas um, for the two years I was involved with that and nobody would take advantage of it and um and nor have they and we were just like why not little rock is you know we're a growing city um i'm very proud of my roots here in little rock and um you know we just want to bring something nicer to little rock and you know whether it be for the high-end user or you know anybody in the construction side of things so that's Next question? Yep. <clears throat> Who are you and what do you do? Hi, I'm Terry Bessier. I'm a bookkeeper with Know Your Finances. And I have a question that is on my mind about pricing. How did you determine what you were going to charge? Um, well, this unit that we have, um, we have a three stall trailer that uh, has three private modules which are three private bathrooms two women's and one men's contained into one trailer and our price schedule and this is based on what i've spoke with other people in the industry on a national level on what they are renting their units for for example a wedding is uh for a one-day event is is one thousand five hundred dollars or a fundraiser so on and so forth um when you look at a weekly rental or a month-long rental, you know, it, it, it breaks down from the 1500 It doesn't go $1,500 a day for 30 days if you were to lease it for a month. But, um, you know, based on, you know, 
our capture, you know, of, of weddings and fundraisers, um, that's that's our price point. Um, these are expensive trailers. Um, the unit we have is nearly um, we've invested thirty thousand dollars in this unit, plus any of the other marketing and advertising that we're that we're currently doing, and it's just a it's a it's a big expense to um, to bring something nicer to the public. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking is also if you have someone that doesn't want to pay the fee that you're asking for and you're wanting revenue, that's the thing I'm looking at is if you're wanting revenue, do you take just an opportunity so that at least you have some income coming in or do you stick with your pricing policy? Well, one thing that we, we've battled with that, um, I understand uh, your question, you know, hey, lease it to us for a thousand. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Well, that, you know, uh, that kind of stirs the competition and the, the price point for what the industry is already uh, demanding. Um, other options that we offer are um, we will come into an event, offer the restroom trailer to the event planners at no charge but yet we will want to put an attendant at the trailer for the event and charge a per flush or a per use fee. Someone can buy an armband for a, you know, a fee and have an all day access to the unit or they can pay a single use fee, which that will help us recover our cost for having the unit cleaned out, pumped out, and then also the time and labor of the attendant and some profit for us to, to recover the cost on our unit too. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Who are you and what do you do? I'm Paul Sage. I have Sage Advice. I'm a marketing consultant and writer. And so I'm interested in your brand. Uh, the Lux Lab, is that do you own that? That is your product, or is that a, a, a franchise? That is uh, that is our company that we've started here locally in Little Rock. Um, I'm Glenna Cook with Notables. Uh, what I'm wondering is, okay, if I walk into that, what's going to make this really special? Why? What makes it deluxe? Uh, thank you. Yeah, what, our units, um, if you look at what's available to the public now as far as temporary restrooms, you look at porta potties or you look at restroom trailers. When you walk into um, one of the modules on our trailer, you enter the, the door, you walk in the door and you're in a back actual bathroom. You've got a vanity with a sink with running water, you've got um, flushable toilets. This unit's air conditioned and heated for in the cooler months. Um, we have a mirror above the vanity. It has um, LED lighting inside for the ladies who like to primp or check their makeup while they're in the bathroom. And uh, it just is a totally different experience from when you walk into a porta potty. Um, again, with the flushable toilets, you know, you don't see all the mess. So it's just, uh, it, it, it helps bring an event um, to a different level when, when you offer nicer restrooms. Uh, it's how we feel. We strongly believe that. So, um, Michael Delon with Paperback Expert. Have you thought about, because I had the same thought, it looks like a porta potty on wheels. Have right. you thought about doing video of somebody just opening the door, the, the entire experience, being in it? Because I'd, I'd love to see inside this unit right. without actually seeing the unit. Sure. Um, that's a great idea, um, and we're open to any suggestions, uh, any and all. Um, again, trying to get our product in front of as many people as possible is becoming one of our biggest challenges because not everybody knows that these units are available. When we talk about it, everybody says, oh, that's a great idea. I would love, you know, we'd love to see that. I would love to use it. It's like, all right, well, what we've decided, my wife and I, is that 
a lot of things that we're trying to do is get involved with, um, you know, if we've got to donate our services and unit, you know, for the next 12 months to get in front of people and get the exposure, start people talking about about what their experience has been, um, you know, that's what we're going to have to do. Um, Every now and then I'll run across someone that says, oh, yeah, I, I've seen one of these restroom trailers. I, I saw it at a golf, a golf tournament or, you know, I was at the, at the zoo in New Orleans and I saw a unit at, at the zoo in New Orleans. And it's like, okay, yeah, well, you know, they're out there. People are using these units. They're not in Little Rock. We've got to get people's minds, you know, bent in a different way about what, you know, what people it say is acceptable what what people will use i mean most women that i know refuse to use a porta potty guys are a totally different story so it's um you know it becomes more personal for the ladies when they walk in a porta potty versus this unit and typically on this unit weddings fundraisers more personal uh, social gatherings we will provide an attendant to keep this unit clean and tidy so it's um, just an advantage over what's currently available it's going to cost more but it's gonna you know you get what you pay for so uh, lee mcallister with n8 partners uh one question with kind of two parts sure um so a little bit more specifically how do you find customers but maybe uh maybe more to the point how do customers find you well uh, for customers to find us, we're currently Google, Internet, and trying to stay, you know, visible there. Um, how do we find our customers? You know, it's just a pound in the pavement. You know, go to the city uh, of any, <laughs> make contacts uh, to the, uh, you know, city halls, uh, local municipalities, and uh, allow them to, you know, know that we're available um, we send information emails um, we're proud that we just became a, uh, a contractor for the federal government we've got a cage code number which is kind of new for us but that's allowing us to look at um, government bids and contracts that are um, being awarded and that allows us to be able to then in turn bid on these said jobs and hopefully um, get our product out there as well. Hi, I'm Nicole with City Connections. Um, in your, you, you've talked about being willing to donate them for a time to get people to know about it. Have you in your business plan decided how many you're wanting to do that, like how many events, and do you have events planned yet? I'm, I'm sorry, what was the last part? Do you have events planned yet where you're going to donate them? Well, I have one event um, that we're looking at hopefully being able to team with um, here in Little Rock at the, uh, there's a food truck festival mm -hmm. that's, um, I think that's headed up by the downtown partnership. And um, we're hoping to be able to work with them to bring the unit in and uh, set it up and then offer the public that comes to this event um, an option if they want to use the porta potties by all means please do but if you want to pay a few dollars or pay five dollars for an all-day pass to use this restroom trailer please come use us um, what we hope that this will accomplish is enough people will use our trailers to um, start talking about us and then also in turn they will know that we're available and uh, we will be able to hand out our information as well. But, you know, with, it all be, with all that being said, is the funds that we'll collect at these donation um, uh, deals is that we will um, we'll be able to use that, those funds to help pay to have this unit pumped out. You know, we've, the waste has got to, you know, we have to do something with the waste, so we will subcontract someone to pump that unit out and then have the unit cleaned as well. So that's just just a way for us to try and get get our product out there. 
Doug Collins, um, uh, one of the mentors here at AVC. I know you, Doug. Um, uh, I came in a little late, so I might have missed this, but where in the world you do your research in what companies around the country are, are finding this to be a sustainable business? Um, well, te yeah, just tell me where, where your research came from and what other businesses around the country you found that, that this really was a profitable business that uh, was sustainable. Uh, what, I mean, my only experience is, is from when I was selling these units for Wells Cargo and, and marketing um, these units, a lot of the businesses that were really successful were uh, portable toilet rental companies. You know, that was our main um, customer that we would go after to try and sell to. And um, sure, we are not a portable toilet rental company. That is not um, that is not the vision of our company at this point. Um, and again, to uh, the the research is is only just for from the sales that we've that I made in the past and to see have seen where people have been successful with these units um, you know it's fundraisers festivals uh, weddings private parties they're here in Little Rock and and people don't have access to it um, it's pretty much about <laughs> we've got to get it out there and um, So I know that you recently launched this as your own uh, own label uh, under Lu Luxury Lab, um, but have you seen or been in the business through like a tailgating season for like football? Because I know that's that's huge, and I noticed there's a huge opportunity because I can't tell you how many times I've stood in line and had to wait forever, and the restrooms are terrible, and you know the experience is just really poor. Um, have you seen that in any areas or been in the business through a season like that? We have not. Um, certainly, we would love to be able to reach out um, to the universities to bring this to some of these outdoor events. Um, it's just, uh, once again, just getting the word out. People don't know that we're here, you know, and that's the the legwork that that we have to do on our end is to become visible within these different groups and entities to uh, let them know that our services are available. Christy Olson with Cartridge World. Somebody was at War Memorial last year because I remember making the trek across Fair Park from my group to pay the ten bucks for the armband to go to the nice bathroom. Yeah. So. And it was well worth it. <laughs> sure. So who, who in town would be your comp? I mean, it wouldn't seem like you would have a lot of competition in this market, but uh, I don't know much about portable <laughs> toilets. You know, I, as far as I know, there, uh, there is one company in town. I've heard that they have a trailer unit. I don't know if they subcon or bring it in from out of state. Um, <coughs> I have not seen the unit. Um, I know that if, if they do have a unit, it's not being, you know, advertised or marketed, uh, which may be good on their behalf. You know, maybe they have that unit rented out on one of these government contracts for a long term. That's kind of what our hopes are, is to find a couple of long-term rentals for a unit, uh, put it on an Air Force base or a military institution for a six-month uh, lease or a rental and um, you know that's that's what our hopes are to do is to to grow it that way which will then in turn allow us to invest in other inventory there you know there's um, the inventory that is available to us we can have units that have um, that are ADA accessible that lower to the ground for uh, for ADA compliance um, there are shower trailers that we can get involved with. There are shower trailers that have toilets and sinks in them. So you have a separate modules that have, it's basically a full bathroom. Um, whether it be for uh, emergency response or um, a lot of these units are used out, in, out on the west coast with the fires for the firemen. Of course, we don't have that so much here, but it's, um, Again, just getting the word out. So. Well, 
Awesome. That wraps it up for the Q&A session. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Give, it up. Give it up for Jamie. Thank you, guys.